We are following new developments in several major stories at this hour, including the Delphi murder suspect, Richard Allen. Back in court today, that hearing just wrapped up where they discussed a possible change of venue, the gag order being argued. More on that coming up. And in Massachusetts, a community is in mourning the disappearance of wife and mother Ann Walsh, devastating them. We are hearing new details from her friends and family. One colleague saying she was surprised that Anna suddenly took a job in a different city from her family. And our live coverage continues in the antifreeze murder retrial of Mark Jensen. Of course, TV cameras are inside that Kenosha, Wisconsin courtroom, bringing you every moment. We'll get you back into live court in just a moment. Court TV Live starts now. and welcome to Court TV Live. I'm Julia Janae in for Julie Grant this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Richard Allen back in court today for a hearing addressing several motions in the Delphi murder case. Here is Allen today in dramatic entrance video in the courtroom being yelled out by an onlooker there outside of the courthouse. Are you Richard? You're going to prison for the rest of your life. Shame on you, Richard Allen! October and charged with two counts of murder in the deaths of Abby Williams and Libby German. The girls' bodies were found in February of 2017 after the two went for a walk on the Delphi Historic Trails. It would take a little over five years for police to make an arrest in the case. And now the accused killer continues through the legal system. And today's attorneys, and today those attorneys discussed a suitable county to bring jurors from to hear this case that occurred in Carroll County. They're going to have a week to come to an agreement. The judge also said that the gag order that has been put in place will remain that way and a bail hearing is going to be held on February 17th. And joining me now in Minneapolis, Minnesota to talk about this, criminal defense attorney Joe Tamburino. Joe, thanks so much for being on. Let's talk about this case, uh, the Delphi murders case. And we're hearing now and just learning that though there was this discussion about a change of venue, they may be bringing a jury in from a different place. Can you break down what the difference is? Well, here's the the bottom line. You have to have a fair and impartial jury. And when you're in a situation where everyone in the community knows about the case, many times the defense will say, we need a different venue, a different location to have the trial. So you would still have the same witnesses, you would still have the same attorneys, but it's just gonna be in a different location. But in order to get a change of venue, you have to have some type of evidence that in fact, you could not get a fair and impartial jury in the county in which it happened. And many times what they do is media studies and try to gather basically surveys from the community to show that you could not have a fair and impartial jury there. Well, we know Richard Allen has complained about several things in this case. He's demanded money for the things that he'll need for his prosecution. He's claimed indigency, uh, but his defense would likely want this jury to be sequestered. We don't have confirmation on that yet, but what are your thoughts on whether this jury that may be bust in to come to Carroll County to sit and hear this case, whether it makes more sense for them to be sequestered, which it seems that courts are leaning away from these days, or if they will be in a hotel until this case is over. I don't think the jury would be sequestered, and here's why. One of the reasons you do a gag order, and remember, gag orders don't happen that often. I mean, it's the rare case where all of a sudden a judge will say, nobody can talk about this at all. But one of the reasons you do it is because you don't want information leaking out to potential jurors. So with a gag order in place, I don't think they would sequester the jury throughout the whole trial. Of course, the jury would be sequestered when they get the case at the end of the trial, but while the trial is going on, it's highly unlikely. We were just showing that entrance video where there are onlookers yelling out at this person. Do you think that could impact a jury, even if they're from a different county? Will the court be able to protect them from what may be outside influences, even going in and out of the courtroom each day? You can only protect jurors so much. Of course, when they walk from their van or car or whatever it is into the courthouse, they could easily hear onlookers or people who are heckling the defendant. The way the judges usually try to combat that is to tell the jurors, look, you might hear things, but you have taken an oath 
that you must be fair and impartial, and whatever you hear outside of this courtroom, you must put aside. And I think most of the time, jurors abide by that. Now, Joe, we saw that play out in that major trial that happened in your area there in Minneapolis back in 2021, the murder of George Floyd. There were a lot of measures taken to protect that jury.